Chris Keys for Premier Guitar. Today I'm at the Basement East in Nashville, Tennessee with Ariel Posen, who did a great job matching the weather outside. It's a it's a moody Monday, got some yeah. rain. That was a very moody intro. Yeah. Just playing <laughs> playing to the forecast. Exactly. Let's dive right into this. We talked about it in 2020, but it is worth noting again, this mule is a hollow body steel guitar, right? Steel exactly. body guitar. Exactly, yeah. Now what else should we know about it? I've been playing these guitars uh, for a while. They're uh, mule resonator, resophonic by my friend Matt in Saginaw, Michigan. And long story short, he's been making resonators for a long time. Started making electrics, Tele style, shaped electrics. I begged him for a while to make a Strat style, eventually did. Um, and it's a baritone, so it's a short scale, I guess. It's like a Strat, 25 and a half scaling. Okay. But tuned B standard. And this is actually version three now okay. of mine. Yeah, so my previous one, which is also blue, it's a lighter blue. It's nothing to do with the color, it just, uh, I, you know, play a lot, tour a lot, and I st I'm just always wearing down the volume pots uh -huh. and the tone knobs, so uh, the first two versions are a little tougher to get inside and clean stuff out, like, it's not like your typical fender or something to yeah. get in there, so keep making some adjustments to just make the ergonomic side of maintaining the instrument a bit better, so that's why uh, we... Just came up with another version for the road. So this is like my main road one, and I still use my other one primarily for recording and studio. Okay. Because like they're the exact same, but they do sound a little different. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, what? Speaking of pots, what do you? Because you use the volume in such a way that is so uh, expressive, and you don't have a volume pedal on the floor. Yeah. Uh, is there anything special going on there with the pots? Not that I know of, and I'm gonna sound like. I don't know anything because I don't. Uh, I have no idea what the pots are. Okay. Uh, I think they're probably just a very standard whatever normally. Nothing special. Nothing special. Um, yeah, I just, I just like controlling as much dynamic and volume and basically everything as I can with my hands rather than the foot. When I first started getting into pedal boards and gear when I was really younger, <clears throat> I went through every single volume pedal and everyone had the, uh, the Dunlop one with the yep. string brakes yep. eventually, and you replace it, and it never quite works the same, and then everyone's like, no, you gotta get the, the Boss one, it's okay. And Boss one was pretty good, but then something would go wrong in that. I tried a few different versions, and I just quit because something would always happen. I didn't like how they affected my sound, and uh, I just like my foot, uh, sorry, my hand instead, <laughs> yeah. my foot. So I just swapped to that, and I'm not a, like, a crazy, whale sound swell no. kind of guy. It's more of like an articulation, embellishment um, type of thing. So that's how I use it. All right. So it works for me. And what should else uh, we know about the guitar? I know that it has a maple neck. I know that that's uh, kind of consistent through the three models that you have. Yep. Um, the pickups are made by Mule. So they're mini humbuckers. They look like, this one kind of looks like a gold foil, but it's just a mini humbucker. So they're pretty low output, which again, allows more headroom more dynamics, which I'm all about. I don't like guitars that start compressing too early because it just changes not only how it sounds, but entirely how it feels. Yeah. And I just start playing differently. I don't know if anyone else relates to that that's watching, but you know, when you, you're playing with a band that's really loud and you're trying to keep up with the volume and you're playing through like a Princeton, which is a great amp, but doesn't have a lot of headroom. It just starts squishing so fast. And it, it just makes me feel like I need to compensate with more notes or more speed or something like that. Yeah. I try to avoid that, and those pickups are the opposite. It's just like headroom, clean if you want it, still maintains a lot of like meat and sound if you're at like six or seven, which I often live around. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we can get into that with the pedals because I always have a drive on. Um, but 10 sounds great, wide open, halfway. It still maintains a lot of it. There's no like treble bleed or anything like that. So yeah, pickups are mule. Um, everything else is just a three-way switch. Um, this is a page capo. I've been using these for almost 10 years now. 
They're just handy because I, I do a little bit of capoing in the show because I only have two guitars with me on the road. So instead of B, I can be in, you know, C standard, C sharp standard. You get the drift. Yeah. Um, what should people know about uh, strings? Yeah. Brandon gauges. Yeah. So I use on these guitars String Joy um, 17 to 64. And it sounds crazier than it is because <laughs> we're tuned down to B standard. So completely tuned down a fourth. I've just, you know, my, Scott's a good friend who I think just works right up the road. Um, it took a couple tries to just tell him like, hey, I'd love to make baritone work on a standard scale guitar, but not make it sound like a baritone guitar where it falls into that bass yeah. region, that really tight, I don't know how to describe it. It's like its own bass region, <laughs> sonically speaking. So after a couple tries, we just tried, you know, I usually use 11s for standard tuned guitars. So, you know, we just, it took a few tries, like I said, I feel like I've said that just six times already in the last minute, but 17 for a high B versus a, an 11 high E felt matched down a fourth from E to B. Mm -hmm. So it's the idea behind it. And every time someone plays this, like if you play this right now, everyone's like, okay, I'm gonna go for that big bend. And it's like, oh wait, it's easy. Everyone thinks because the strings are heavier, it's a bit tougher. Mm -hmm. um, but it feels like 11s. It's, it's all about compensation. Tuning. It's all about compensation, yeah. So it works for me. Sometimes when the weather changes and the, uh, you know, the action changes a bit or the, the neck warps a bit, like it can start to feel really tough to play if then that you just get it set up. Yeah. Um, but for the way I tour right now, I typically just have two guitars with me. I have no one helping me bring other guitars. You know, if I could, I'd bring 10 guitars. I'd have a few standards, a few open E, a few open D. And with those, it'd be lighter tunings. But because I don't have that luxury right now and today, um, I just have these, which are both the same gauge of strings. And it's just all about capoing up if I can, if I need to be in open this or open that. So yeah. So before we move on to the Jazz Master, what kind of gets, why does that come to the dance? Why, in terms of uh, tunings, or why does that get used versus the mule here? Because I write in open tuning and standard tuning. So those so kind of yeah. cover both? Yeah, and they're, well, they're very different sounding guitars, first of all, of course. Mm -hmm. But the two different tunings, I'm very much uh, not one tuning does it all. I really like what I get from standard, and I really like what I get from open. It, they almost feel like two different instruments, and I play kind of different. Um, in each one, mm -hmm. like open tuning feels more like piano to me with a left hand and right hand when you're fretting and standard it feels like guitar. Yeah. And while this still does feel like guitar, it, it just changes. It, it makes me just think a little differently, makes me play a little differently and it inspires different ideas. So if I'm writing and I'm just feeling a little stale, I pick, I pick up an open tune guitar and it just makes you go in a different direction. And then you might get stale on the opening and you go back. So it's, it, it just helps for creativity. And so I write songs in both and that helps me cover the parts in both. Got it. Yeah. Well, maybe if you'd be so kind to maybe put on the, the Jazz Master, because yeah. I know, I'm sure as we get through your pedals, we'll, we'll go back to the mule, but for maybe sure. just to hear how the Jazz Master speaks with your hands on it. You got it. <laughs> Like output wise, it's a bit quieter mm. than the mule. Again, there's more dynamics. I, I was never a jazz master guy. Yeah, what made I, you go this, this route? Honestly, I, I by accidentally tried one out. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it was like an Anderton's video years ago I was doing and it was like, hey, this is actually, like I, I have a, like a Nash. Uh, Bill was doing these offsets where it was like a jazz master body, but a telly. Oh wow. Like a telemaster it was okay. called. So I've had that forever. And it always felt funky and different. And I liked I just like how it feels, that offset kind of thing. But I never mess with like, you know, the rhythm circuit and just this configuration. And I think a big reason is is because whenever I'd play a jazz master standard tuning, it was very bright. 
mm. and kind of brittle sounding. And I know a Strat and a Tele can be like that too, but once you figure it out, you know how to deal with it. And I didn't know how to deal with it uh, on a jazz master, but I just played the right one. I was on tour, I was in London on Denmark Street. I think it was Region Sounds. And I actually played one exactly like this. Like it looked like this. The color had nothing to do with <laughs> how it made me feel to play. But I just kind of connected with it and it made me want to explore and I had the opportunity to get one and I, I just, uh, yeah, I said, can you put it in open tuning with the lower strings and the lower tuning, the open tuning and like the bright pickups, the bright everything that comes with the jazz, it was a perfect blend. It was the best of both worlds and it found this middle ground where it was not bright and brittle anymore. It wasn't too low end, it was just kind of mid forward a lot of highs, a lot of lows. You swim in like warm waters when it comes musically. I feel yeah. like that your tone's more warm. So it's funny that that through, I mean, obviously you have a lot of things that help color it. And I'm sure the setup and how you play and attack the instrument. But yeah, jazz masters are typically, think, like bright, jangly yeah. machines. And the way you just kind of played it a little bit earlier was, was not that. Right, exactly. And the best way I get to know an instrument is either on stage or in the studio. And... I acquired it right before I started recording my record Headway. Okay. So it was just like, okay, in the studio, let's let's try it out versus like a guitar with humbuckers that it was like at first a bit jarring because I wasn't used to it. And I'm like, okay, so you're you're quite you're good at this and you're good at that. You're gonna lean into the things it's really good at. And for the things it's not as strong at because I don't I'm very much a like a this one guitar does not shouldn't do it all. Yeah. And like this guitar, I like it a lot for my shows, for, for my sound, it's awesome. Does it do everything great? No. And why should it? Why yeah. should any guitar? I, I, I really think that like, Strat's great for that, Telly's great for that, Les Paul's great for whatever, you know? I think that's the beauty of instruments is they all have their own voice and they do something really special. And it's just a matter of leaning into what they do well. Um, but in this case, it was just, I connected with it, and then once shows started happening again, I just took it out because I hadn't been able to play any shows with it or tour <laughs> yeah. with it. And uh, I've been using it all year as my, as my second guitar on the road, and it just is awesome. It feels good. I've done a few shows with some other ones that I normally play with. I, uh, I typically tour with, for the open tune guitar, a Collings 360, or my Josh Williams Mockingbird. Kind of like a 335 yeah. type. Killer guitars. There's no love loss there at all. Um, but I've just gotten so used to how this feels. It's easy to play, um, durable with travel and stuff. I'm, yeah. I'm, I am sometimes afraid of like uh, the Mockingbird getting damaged or something like that. Just so those kind of things. It's just, it can take a beating. It's a fender, you know? Yeah. Now, before we move on to the amp here, the two rock that's standing behind us is, uh, it, what should we know specifically? Is this like an American one or is it a custom shop? Yeah, it's a master built actually. Oh, okay. So it was built by my friend Carlos Lopez, who doesn't work for Fender anymore. Recently just started his own company, Castadosa, doing baritones. Oh, right. So yeah, I was, we were introduced. I see something in your future. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, I, help, I, I did the videos for him when he uh, announced it. Oh, okay. They're, they're great guitars. We were, we've always been on the same page and when, we, when we were introduced to each other, hit it off. Spoke and the same language. Yeah, I told him what I like. Uh, I said I don't like treble bleeds. I don't... Uh, Why uh, not? Why not the treble bleed? Because again, I, I'm controlling my volume all the time. I don't actually want it to get brighter when I get quieter because I find it gets just uh, more brittle yeah. and thinner. I wanted to maintain, um, I know we're kind of noisy because I'm right in front of the amp, but it actually gets quite warmer, like. I know it sounds almost muffled, but I like that. I, it, softer and warmer identifies with quieter to me rather than like brighter, <laughs> pointier and Harsher, quieter, yeah, you know? Yeah. So that's just my preference. I, I, I have no judgment towards people that like treble bleed. I just. I just like what works for me and I stick to that and that's fine. Speaking of what works for you, because we've spoken, you know, in the, the pandemic era of our lives. Yes. Uh, and you had a two rock, yep. not this one though. So what made, what made you change to go to the Bloomfield Drive? Well, I think it was the Reverb or Reverb, I, not particular what model. Yeah, was, I, I normally play the traditional clean. That one. So our tour that we're currently on is a fly out tour. Okay. We flew out, played a couple of shows. So we're using backline everywhere. 
So this is not mine. Oh. Shout out to my friend Corey Congilio, oh. who, who loaned me this amp today. Um, Nashville loan? Yeah. To be honest though, like we were talking before the cameras went on, put, put a blindfold on and just like make one of these amps clean yeah. and loud. I don't care which one it is. I like the traditional clean because I connected with it when I tried it. I, I like was one of the first to try it at the shop there and it didn't even have a, it was just a chassis. And I like to turn something on, whether it be a pedal, even a guitar or an amp, and it's like, oh, there it is. Yeah. It sounds great. You don't have to fiddle with it and like find the sound. It just is right out the gate. And that's what the traditional clean was. And honestly, they all are. There's, there's more options. I know some people like the options. That's great. And this is awesome too. Again, like I just got have a clean sound and I run drive and everything else off the board. Well, let's dive right into the pedals. Okay. I will have you kindly switch back to the mule. Sure. And uh, you can talk to us about what's going on here. Okay. Some few, uh, familiar friends and some new friends. Yeah, so the last time we chatted and did the at-home rundown, I basically have the exact, I go for the same sounds. I'm always swapping. I, I feel like you guys must find a trend in a lot of players when you have recurring rundowns like this. Yeah. Everyone's doing the, their same sound. But you just like evolve. You want to try different stuff out. So like, there's never any love loss between. Like, I don't even have my signature I was pedal on ask. right now. Yeah, yeah. Elephant in the room. You went right for it. Yeah, and I'll address it. I just, I'm just trying, I'm just trying this out, and it's all good. And I have a few boards at home, and this is this is the one for touring, especially flying, where I can fit this in a suitcase. It's got protection. And you know, going through an airport, I don't have to lug around a really heavy. It's enough to have two guitars on your back. Yeah. Sometimes you know, like you don't want to. So it, it's great. Um, my friend Sammy helped me put this together, and I've been using this mm, about a year now. So I don't know. Do you want me to go? Yeah. In well, any well maybe first, let's ask about. I, I, I'll do this sometimes, and I get heat in the comments. Is <laughs> is there anything we should know about routing? in terms of like, what are you running in order? Because sometimes I know there's no right or wrong answers, but there is kind of a convention, conventional wisdom yeah. in terms of layout. And then is there anything in your effects loop, assuming this has No, one? I don't do any effects loop. Why is that? I just don't, I've never gotten on with it. And maybe I, it's just that I'm the type of person that doesn't like getting too granular with stuff. Like with MIDI, it already makes me sweat a bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, effects loops, it makes me sweat a bit. I just. I found it was overwhelming always putting like reverbs or delays mm. through the effects loop. So I just never got on with it. And I, again, just like I like to have the volume in my hands and dynamics in my hands, I want to have control of the effects right here. And I don't want it reacting extra in any way than, it, than I know how it should just in front of the amp, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, I... And then anything in routing to cut you off, sorry. But uh, anything I'll that we in, should know. I'll happily go in order. Okay. Maybe I'll go in reverse order. But so the Duelist here is my always on right now. Okay. So people know the Duelist by King Tone is a dual overdrive. Blues Breaker and a Tube Screamer-ish side. So I have the Blues Breaker side on always. And I'll just show you what I'm talking about. So full volume. <laughs> But if I go to about like halfway through. It cleans up, but with a bit of that hair. As opposed to. Yeah. You know, that like that's gorgeous. It's clean and just. And especially because you have a lot of headroom already kind of dialed into your exactly. setup. So it allows you to kind of go there and have the different shades. Yeah, I mean, I've, I remember first time I saw Jeff back, I was just like, wow, he doesn't tap dance on overdrives. He just, it's all here. Mm. And I love that. It made so much more sense to control your dynamics. Like in a show, I'm probably full volume like 18 to 22% of the night. Oh, wow. The rest of the night, I'm, I'm like. comes across on camera as well, but you know, you can hear that, right? Yeah, like there's yeah. a difference between gain, but the volume, like the punch is still there. It's almost like it's mastering for like live mastering for guitar where like there's perceived loudness. Um, people think they want loud, but sometimes you, it, you don't realize it's punch 
what is the yeah. loud thing that is what we're hearing and wanting in, yeah. a, in a recording. So that's kind of how it feels like in, in this regard. Mm. Okay, so I'll go in order here. Okay, so in terms of the pedal order, uh, the, the purists aren't going to like this, but the polytune, which does have a buffer in it, I guess that helps, is between the Duelist and the Argonaut, which I know is weird, but it's just there because um, we couldn't fit the polytune <laughs> anywhere else. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's where that is. Otherwise, uh, the, the chain makes sense. I, ha I have the Duelist on because it's always on, so I'll just leave it. Okay. Um, so why don't we go in reverse order and Let's we'll work it. our way up. So I got Tarantino style. Exactly. Um, the first pedal here is the Hydra, which um, is by Keeley. We did a limited si signature version, which just had my own preset on it. And which is what? Like, what, what would that be? Oh, I'll show you. Okay. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's this harmonic trim. But it's kind of like the flint. It does a like a normal trim uh -huh. and one other trim. But I like harmonic. That's what I usually use. And then it has a reverb, which does a spring, a plate, and uh, what's the other one? It's kind of like a room sound, I think. Did I read that right? Yep. Uh, thank God. <laughs> so I have my presets the plate. Okay. So I just kind of use it as like a reverb boost. Because I use reverb and a slap on, which is, I guess that's on too, but. That's amp reverb. So just subtle, and I like to use that maybe at the end of a, a solo. Okay, I'm just gonna go, I'll go mix and match here, but let's say I kick on the fuzz, and I just really want to accentuate a moment. So I'll go like, without it all, you know. a little bit more tail. I'm not a big like delay guy for leads. Mm. Um, I, I like the, I just feel like reverb makes it sound bigger than countless trails. Yeah. At least that's where I'm at now. It always yeah. changes. You yeah. Know? It's a moving target. It's a moving target. And this pedal's great too because sometimes like we are, in fact last night, um, backline reverb wasn't working on the amp. So no problem. I just dial in the verb there. And we're good. I don't get the reverb boost, but at least it's like a, as a safety, you know, yeah. just covering my ass. It's there. Um, next is the H9, which has kind of become a big part of my sound just because I have sounds on there that are kind of parts of songs. So, for example. It's a kitchen sink. Totally. But now it's like I've, I've really dialed in this board and they come up with a version where you can finally have two affect algorithms at once. Yeah, the H90. So now I have to, exactly, so now I have to rethink everything. Um, I have this Leslie sound. I have this uh, mod filter uh, kind of sound that I put together. It's like the heart by heart sound. And so this is like my, I have, I should also say, the H9 is running through the MC3 by Morningstar, okay. which is just a MIDI switcher to give you more access to all your sounds and presets. And this is my main page. It's the Leslie, the filter sound that you hear now. And then another slap is a backup. Now, why would you have two slaps at once? Because it's kind of a cool sound. Yeah. So I have a song called It's You. <laughs> and the sound of it basically 
it makes it sound really distant and different and the two slaps playing off each other. Is Plus you're the only guitar player, so why not? Exactly, yeah. it's not really stepping on too much other stuff. Um, this other page, the only sound I really use, live at least, I use this flutter sound on a song called Nobody Else in the choruses. So instead of it just being... It becomes this. So it just gives it like this crazy depth. Yeah. And, as, and in the trio, it fills it out nicely. Um, I have a chorus, which I really don't use. I have some new songs that might have a chorus on a song or two, so I'll use that. And then this last one I occasionally use is a swell sound. Just like for an intro or something. Mm. It's nice to have. I'm running this Barn 3, this attachment, which is essentially like an expression pedal for the H9. So any sound, let's say I kick, kick on this tape delay, which is kind of like a backup delay if I need it. You know, I can tap it. I can make it. Or the other side, just, I have it set so it just repeats. You know, I can get weird with it. strange but it's cool yeah I could see how that could be a blast and you know what I, I I've been using this board in the studio as well because there's a lot under the trunk you know so to speak that it does a lot of stuff well yeah you packed it with stuff that has multi-function exactly regardless of the h9 and all these pedals like chase bliss and the duelist here for sure um, next is the black fountain by old blood noise that's my slap that's always on and the reason I like this one it's it's rep uh, it's replicating like the old Fender, oh, what's it called? The oil can delay. Yeah. Which sound amazing. And it's just like a warmer. And I just like slap. It just gives you this depth, especially in a trio. It, it gives like a 3D element mm. for me. It, it may be, I, I hear clips of us playing all the time, and then a board tape or proper recording, I hear it, but live, it usually doesn't come across the way it does for me on stage. So yeah. it's almost there for me. Yeah. It, it's like a feel thing. It's Feels a selfish good. thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, the Therme is one of my favorite pedals in the studio to use. Absolutely, it's all over new music I've been working on and past. But live, um, I just use it for one song. Uh, and it's a song called Be Enough. And it was actually, I wrote the song around this, um, this sound. So it's kind of a stock algorithm in there and I just played it and I immediately heard these lyrics why do you feel for when well, I just wrote this song yeah. around it which never happens with equipment and gear so it was kind of funny so live I set that on and John my drummer has to hear it because he plays to it it's not like the song is to a metronome it's like that is the metronome <laughs> yeah. and I turn it on for verses and I turn it off for choruses. So if I don't turn it on at the right time for the verse, then it gets Everything's fucked derailed. up, I can't yeah. use it. Yeah. So I've had, <laughs> but I'm getting, I'm, I'm gonna screw it up tonight now that I've explained it, but I'm getting used to it. It's, it's cool. It yeah. adds su super depth to the song and it's, the, it's like literally the part of the song that is most necessary. So it's fun to have that. Okay, we're almost done. Uh, got a clock there. They don't make this anymore, DS Engineering chronograph is just a clock and if you're playing a festival you're, you're opening for another band you want to be on time I don't know a camera but <laughs> this is your best friend when you're playing a stage where they don't have a clock 
like that, and you know, and, yeah. you, and you, you never want to play overtime. So that's that's what that's for. Just keeps you in check. Um, second last is the Argonaut by Mythos, my friend Zach. This is, I think it's based on like a like a Green Ringer. Is that what it's called? So it's not an Octavian, not, not sorry, not an Octavia. Um, so it's like this spitty, I don't know how to explain it. If I show you it without the overdrive on, it sounds like this. Almost like Sitari. But with the, the, the overdrive on. solo of heart by heart that's that sound mm. um, but when I recorded it he does a full version of it called the Argo which has like, I think a clean blend gain in volume and that's what I use in the recording but this is very pedal board size friendly I want to fit Space as much saver. Spa yeah fit as much as possible on uh, not as much room and last but not least um, this is the mini fuzz by King Tone it's the germanium version and this is my main uh, as epic as a solo or a lead is gonna get, it's that sound. So it sounds like this. But also cleans up really well. fun for that yeah uh, so the duelist so far we've only colored the left side that's always on uh, yeah. when does the right side get kicked on so only in a song called fade and like I was saying earlier the jazz master just has a little less output than this mule guitar uh, so it needs a little help needs a little help so yeah on that song I tend to uh, <laughs> Um, as you can see, if you get a close-up on it, um, the <laughs> the gain is completely off. Yeah, it's just volume and tone, so it's really treating it like a boost mm. rather than another overdrive. Yeah, I think the last thing we need to cover is the slide uh, because I should have asked oh, earlier yeah, right. in the segment. But uh, I'd love to give another shout out. I know we covered it in the first one, but yeah. uh, it's worth mentioning again because it's such a unique design. Right. But it's yes. also pragmatic because I thought it was going to be some revolutionary, yeah, man, I, I, I play it head on and it's not at all. <laughs> yeah. It's just so you don't have the scratchiness of the note on the end of the slide. I honestly don't even know what the purpose of it anymore. I just have been, I've been using it for almost nine, ten years now. So it's just like, it's just it's what I use. Yeah. And I think I told the story, Danny, who makes these, lives in Spokane. And on tour, we all used to like always stay at his house, and he'd open this room, and it's like gold, just shining, you know, brass, you know, and all these slides. And I remember he's like, "You should check this one out. You might like it." And, and I tried it, and felt really good, and it was cool. Uh, we tweaked the interior a bit, and I guess the length. And I just like that it's kind of different than your typical slide with that's cut off. And yeah, in some ways, when you're playing it. Um, If you are playing with the tip of your finger, which I don't know why you would do that, yeah. it, it really doesn't have any ugly sound to it. it. It maintains the rub, the positive rub, so to speak. And what made you connect with brass? Because, you know, that has a certain type of sonic character that can be inviting and can be uh, not so much. I think I just have always played it and I've always liked the sound of it. A lot of my favorite players played brass. I never really connected with a glass slide or ceramic, nickel, like anything. It's just it always just felt like, yeah, brass is the one. It's what I've always played. I think it's a weight thing and a sound thing. Like, 
again, I, I do think that brass is a bit brighter and shrill yeah. compared to glass and ceramic, but with a warmer sound, you know, occasional tuning lower, it, again, it's all about that balance. Yeah. Just like the bat jazz master that's bright with a lower tuning, finds that balance, the brighter slide with the lower sound. Again, it balances it out. You're cooking with a lot of ingredients, but together they, <laughs> they, they, all, they all make sense and make a, exactly. a wholehearted recipe that everyone can love. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Ariel, I really appreciate it. I know that you guys got to get going on, uh, finish sound check, and uh, you know, perform pleasure. a show. But thank thanks you. For, thanks for coming. For this making so time. Fun. Of course, anytime. Killer. Stay safe out there. Uh, everyone over there, over here. Love you guys. Rig Rundown.